Welcome to part 9 of my DIY backyard project. If you have missed the previous progress, check them out in the description. If you are planning to build a deck by yourself, I hope you will find this helpful. This time, we are finally getting into the installation of the ASAC deck boards as well as installing the fascia. But before doing that, I want to tell you about energy efficient windows, they call it low E glass. It can be serious concern, especially if you use PVC or composite. The reflection of this low E glass is so powerful that it can actually start a fire or it melt your deck boards. I will post a link in the description. I bet you any money, most people don't know anything about this and the salesperson at the stores will never talk about that. Let's get started with fascia boards. There are two methods. The first one is using construction glue and screws. The second way is to use spacers and screws. I did not invent this method. I learned it from the deck builder website. The person said he followed the track's installation instructions and the fascia boards pulled away from the frame and popped the screws. I will post the link in the description if you want to read more about that. The solution is to use a spacer. For me, I am brave enough to try both methods and I will let you know the result. If you are using the helical piles and you are building a non-cantilever deck, you will run into this problem. You will need to use huge spacers to hide the galvanized fuse saddle. As you see, the other side I only needed to use quarter inch spacer. You can rip it from a 2x8 using the table saw. Now you understand why my spacers for the front side needs to be this big, because I need to compensate the extra space sticking out from the saddle. There are four possible scenarios. There is no issues if you are building a cantilever deck, which is case A and B. If you are building a non-cantilever deck with wooden post, you can notch the post and hide it inside of the frame. So that is case C. The biggest problem is the last one. You only have this problem if you are using helical piles and non-cantilever deck. If you have missed the difference between cantilever and non-cantilever deck, check out part 4 of this series. I have explained the pros and cons. For me, there are two reasons. First, I want to avoid getting a permit. Secondly, because I have a bridge in my design, this is the strongest way to have the loading points on the flush beams. To cut PVC, I needed to buy a new blade. I am going to shut up and let you watch. This is a lesson learned. ASAC fascia boards only comes with 11 and 3 quarter in width, which is around 12 inches, but they don't have 8 or 10 inches. You have to cut a lot of boards, so time, money, and materials are wasted. Some other manufacturers have better options to choose from. To cut a smooth edge on PVC, you need to have the right blade. I think it is the same for composite.
cut your boards at 45 degrees mitre joint and you will have a very good looking corner. Next question is, do you need expansion gap? It depends on the weather and temperature. When you're doing the installation, ASAC tells you not to leave any gap if you're doing it during the summertime. For reference, I look at another manufacturer, Woof. They said the same, but they tell you to leave a small gap when the temperature is too low. The key temperature is 24 degrees Celsius or 75 in Fahrenheit. The expansion of the deck boards and fissures may be slightly different. Always read the instructions. What kind of screws am I using for my fissure? I am using this color matching screws, number 7, 1 and 5, 8. This is extremely expensive if you are buying them in Canada. I got them from the place where I ordered the deck boards. No matter what brand you are using, make sure one thing, they need to be stainless steels. If not, you will regret. Next, I will work on this one step stairs. This is the advantage of having the super low level deck. I only need one step and of course I don't need any railings. As per instructions from ASAC, there is no need to leave any space on the joint. If you have a good miter saw and a proper blade, you should get this result perfectly fit. I am using this color matching core tax system. It has stainless steel screws and plastic plugs matching the deck color and texture. It's amazing. After you put the plugs on, you don't really see the screws. It comes with this special drill bit that leaves some space for the plastic plug. You then use the hammer to install the plug. Amazing, the screw is totally hidden. I think you got the idea. This is how the finished stairs look. At this point, it is a good time to install the LED lighting. For such low level deck, once the top deck boards are up, it is not easy to get access from the bottom. These are the cheap LED fixtures, I got them from a local hardware store. They are low voltage LED and of course made in China. Lighting makes a huge difference on your deck. Put it as part of your budget when you start planning your deck in the very beginning. There is a very important installation tips. You always want to install the deck boards starting from outside towards your house. If not, you will regret. Next, I am installing the groove boards using the conceal lock hidden fastening system. In theory, it will automatically give you the right spacing. Well, it did not work for me. That's why I am using the tile spacers. 
This is the only way I can have the boards evenly spaced. Based on the instructions, you have to use a scrap piece of board and bang it like that. Do not use a hammer, it will damage the boards. Here is another DIY tips I want to share with you. During the transportation and storage of the boards in the warehouse, the edge of the boards may get slightly damaged. You always want to make it as a habit to get rid of that edge. Just cut quarter of an inch off the board and you are good to go. 20 feet board is hard to work with, especially for one person DIYer. 16 feet is fine. This is the solid board next to the house under the stone sill. It is very tricky to install because there is not enough space. I am using this ugly drill bit extension. It worked. Next, I used this driving bit extension. I wanted to get the screw as close as possible to the house. Now, I have the picture frame ready. Do you remember I told you about the installation direction is so important? I guess you start to understand why. Now we need to rip the very last piece using the table saw. This is looking from the inside of the house. If you put the last piece of board outside, it will look very ugly. Unless you have a special taste, then I am not arguing with you. Now you understand why the installation direction is important. PVC and composite are very similar in terms of installation. Don't underestimate yourself as a DIY person. If you have done good research, you should be able to pull it off. Next time, I will talk about why I bought this joist guard or joist tapes, but I did not install them. I bet most people don't know about the potential issues until you do more research on it. I hope my experience can help you to build your deck. Give it a thumbs up if there are some useful information in this video. If you love DIY and you may want to check out my other videos on my channel. Of course, if you want to see the progress of this crazy DIY backyard project, remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.